What up, everybody? This is Jay Celine. This is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. And I'm Alyssa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. Your boy Giovanni. And today we have a... Sp- I thought you were going to do that stupid nah, ass Nah, we got call. Suge Knight Jr. here right now. <laughs> okay, no, up, it's y'all? Suge Jr., but it's Shug not Suge Knight, right? Sorry. I'm not a junior because his name is actually Marion. I'm the only Suge. Got gotcha. you. Know, so we have the only Suge in the building, the son of Suge Knight. <laughs> Everybody knows Suge Knight. Don't need to run down all who, who Suge right, Knight. If right. you don't know Suge Knight, you probably shouldn't be watching this show. Don't kill yourself. Okay, so. Nah, nah, don't kill yourself. We no. don't need nobody dying. This is okay. not a show about violence. Although, I know that. Although violence will be a topic of discussion at some point. <laughs> So I read an article recently you did, an uh, interview you did with BET. Mm-hmm. I thought it was actually really impressive. Um, and I thought one thing that comes through is that you're extremely smart. So first, I want to know a lot about you. So you attended Fisk University. Tell us, like, your educational background, what you went there for, what your studies were. Okay, well, I'm going to I'm gonna go back far at the sure. Crenshaw because how I got there. Um, thank, for one, thank you for the compliment. Yeah. I, I, like, I appreciate that one. Um, I started out with uh, just playing football at Crenshaw High School. And, you know, I brought Harvard, um, Harvard, Yale, and Dartmouth to the schools nice. because I reached out to them. I actually went out to Harvard and then did excelled over there and did an L.A. Times article. Nice. And um, obviously that was my first kind of downfall, like first kind of like failure. Not really. It was just a learning experience because um, I didn't get the offer all the way, so I didn't go. So that's how I stumbled across, uh, stumbled across uh, um, Anthony Jones, mm-hmm. who, was, uh, who was the VP at Fisk University. Mm-hmm. And then me and him talked to him. He actually offered me an academic scholarship. So then nice. I went off to there. And so so football was your was your skill, your yeah. passion, and that's what let, opened up doors to educational stuff. Most definitely, yeah. So when you were growing up, um, you grew up. did you grow up in a house with your father and your mom or just your father? It was it was started out as both, okay. and then you know obviously after he went to jail, that's when you know they did the split. My mother and father actually didn't actually like they didn't actually split until like 2011. Okay, but it was always separate homes, so you know. Right. But it was always the communication there, and I always kept a strong relationship between both of them. And so, so your relationship, so whatever their relationship was, you still had a good relationship. Yeah, because I'm not involved in it. You know, yeah. I'm, the, I'm the kid. You know. Well, I the just, kids are involved. I think a lot of people. I mean, my father, and mother. I, Interestingly, we're never together except mm. for probably one night. <laughs> oh my God, um, Jason. <laughs> my mother's dead, so I'm not going to shit on her. But, mm. you know, they were they had a very different relationship. My father's always been married to his wife, right. even when he was with my mom. So, right. but clearly, whatever adults do, it does impact the kids. But for you, your relationship stayed. Yeah, you know, you know, it stays the same. And um, right now I'm trying to build it up, you know, get all the kids together, at least especially at the courtroom now, because, you know, he can't see his family at all. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much my goal. And right now setting up that peaceful protest um, upcoming up this March 27th and getting the Shug shirts and everything going. Yeah, one thing I remember too, and we, when we get into kind of what's going on with your father and like you now stepping out and being an advocate, I've never really heard of you. So were you like behind the scenes, private? You were, yeah. did he keep his children private <clears throat> on purpose? Um, pretty much, yeah, I think so. I don't, I can't really speak for my father. You know, that's what I'm, right, I'm kind of speaking, vouching for him now for his defense, but I can't speak for him on that one. Okay. Um, Really, I was when, really, when I asked the question. I mean, your father was a very public figurehead mm-hmm. in hip hop, very public in entertainment. Not even just a boss; he was the boss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I remember back in the early '90s, I used to come down here and and um, participate in uh, the death row Christmas giveaways, giving yeah. out toys, giving out food. I mean, they were really active in the community. So I know he was a very public person, mm-hmm. but his personal life you really didn't know very his much about. Yeah, yeah. Know about. most definitely there. We are. Um, Real personal about that part. Okay. I was more personal with that because at Crenshaw, I went through Jacob. I went as Jacob Knight. Mm. Okay. And now to this day, people, I get people like, if you want to, if they want to know you as Shug, son, you like, nah, man, they, you know, I had my own talent. I did my thing, you know. And you have two other siblings, it is, or? I have, I, I'm going to count all of them. So it's about, I, I don't know all of them all <laughs> like that. Time, but, um, I feel you. But, um, well, my brother, like, from the same mother, my mother, uh, from my mother is me, and then my seven years younger is my younger brother Sosa. Okay, so that's that's from my mom Stormy, and then after like around the same time as Sosa is, that's when you have Michelle's daughter. That's around the same time. After that, you have my older brother uh, Taj. Wait, did you say your mom was Stormy? Stormy? Yeah. Stormy, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Stormy, did she write a book? Yeah. I know your mother. <laughs> That's wow. fucking crazy. You know wait, everybody, Jason. Because no way. Stormy's best friends with Capadonna. <laughs> yeah. And Lord yeah. London. I love Cap. Oh wow. shit! I got to take yeah. Stormy that I, I brought back. her son up. <laughs> wow. That's your mom. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And how old are you? I know you. I'm 21. Wow. No. So I've actually seen you used to go to the barbershop Sephora's. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's how you years ago when you were younger. Okay. So now I'm putting all. The, I got to put this all together. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, I had a moment. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. No, then, so, go no, go ahead, no, go and ahead. And how many more is it? Or just, is that uh, one? sorry, let me see. You got Taj, you know, you got Arian, Taj, me, um, I believe my little brother Sosa, Bailey, 
um, the newest one, Legend, and uh, Taz. So about seven. So about seven. seven. About seven. Wow. Yeah. That's a good number. My dad. And you only grew up. Did you grow up with any of them, or just? I just remember my brother and I. You know, mm-hmm. I knew Taj. You know, um, Taj and Arian. They used to come over. I, like my mom used to watch them all. All of us as younger. So, the, so the siblings, style. although you have different moms, all have a relationship, or you're trying to work together. I'm trying it right to work in. it out. You know, I don't want the like. I don't want the drama. You know, yeah. I've already kind of been through that. I ain't, yeah. I ain't with it. You know. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a relationship with all your siblings? Your um, father's, yeah, your father's, yeah. yeah your I mean, relationship. I mean, for the most part, we all know each other. We mm-hmm. communicate I and mean, we all get along. I think we're all adults, so we're all living in yeah. adult lives. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to get us all yeah. together, but mm-hmm. we communicate for sure. Right. I, got eight, I got eight sisters myself. From really? Saint, yeah. I have 10. Parents. 10 brothers. Eight sisters. sisters, two brothers. I'm the youngest of 11. Wow. Really? Yeah. Well, then the Wayans family. Our daddies. No, no, no. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Hey, come um, on. All, he was. Uh, he, he all was. of us okay. was. So let's get back. <laughs> no, no, no. So exactly. So, um, so I want to know just because I have my, own, I've had my own personal interactions with your father, mm-hmm. and, um, who every time I've ever been around him, the biggest teddy bear, the <laughs> sweetest guy. It's hard to say that, and people be like, what? Because he was literally one of the most, or if not the most feared man in. The hip hop industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was he like as dad? That man, my dad, question. he was um just the motivator, you know? That's mm-hmm. who he made me who I am today. You know, that I grew up with him, has his accolades, you know, how mm-hmm. he what he built it up, you know. The mm-hmm. first man on Wilshire Boulevard, you know, him donating two hundred and fifty thousand Bill Clinton's campaign, you know, him giving out to like giving back to the community. And that's what I'm pretty much what I want to do about. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm all about now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like his um, you know, that legacy of being the most feared man in the hip hop industry is what is kind of led to the treatment that he's receiving. Yeah. Because nobody really knows about his philanthropic activities. Nobody knows about the charitable contributions that he's made. Like that's not the stuff that people concentrate on. That's not what made him. You right. know, that's not what made Death Row or right. anything like that. So right. that's why I don't really go off the fear thing because I don't see anything. I don't see what you have to fear about. Mm-hmm. He was just mostly about his business, and that's what he kind of told me. His dad. Well, well, legit people. Yeah. Sorry, Jason, but legit people are would really want to know what your take on Straight Outta Compton was. Like, did you watch that film and did you see I, accuracy? I never seen it. I, I seen bits of part of it. You know, mm-hmm. when I was going at Fisk University, the whole school kind of like mm-hmm. they reached out to me, like because I didn't want to come out my dorm because mm-hmm. wow. I was just doing my. I'm like, I'm gonna just focus on my work because I don't want to see anybody portray mm-hmm. my dad the wrong way. Mm-hmm. I was kind of disappointed the people who were behind it, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, at least, you know, we that's your business partner at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So you shouldn't want to just want to badmouth anybody's mm-hmm. name like that. So right. Okay, so let's, so let's go back a little bit. So I like I said, I met your father years ago when he had the office on Wilshire. Mm-hmm. And you would take that elevator up to his office. As soon as you get off, one thing that's just noticeable right out the gate is just all the red carpeting. Mm-hmm. Like his co- his colors was red and black, and I forgot the young lady that used to work at the desk, but she was super cool, light skinned chick. I don't remember, but anyway, and he had security at the door. But it was um, I didn't feel the death row environment yeah. like you hear heard about it on TV or in magazines. Yeah, because it wasn't like that, you know. That's it was like a that's, family. That's what that's the problem with today. That's I'm killing all the myths. I'm like a myth killer, you know. Mm-hmm. Just I don't want to just deal with all the myth. Oh, we should do this. Hung over these people, you know. Hung hung him over the balcony. Like if that happened, that happened. And my only problem with that is with people. Why you wait to for him not to have a voice to come out about that mm-hmm. now? Mm-hmm. You know, why are all these people coming out now when he's now locked up? When he's going, if he's facing a trial or something, you mm-hmm. know, that's not right. Mm-hmm. When you went to school and your name was Jacob. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Jacob Knight was that because you you didn't your mother or you didn't want people to make the connection? Oh no, that was on me. That was on me. When I went to school as Jacob at Crenshaw, that was I want that to be Jacob Knight, the football player. Who is this guy? That's me. That's my own image. So you want to build your own image? Yeah, and that, not that being, was my idea. Not being a shadow of your father. Yeah, that was my idea. Plus, I go to school at Crenshaw. At the same time, we did not know if that was safe or not. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it, it's it's not like that. Yeah. I went, you know, I went to well, going there. It humbled me a whole bunch. You know, mm-hmm. I have some great friends still. Some to this day, I love the community. Mm-hmm. I love everything about LA. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And so now that you're publicly advocating for a father, let's talk about the current situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's currently in jail yeah. in the county jail mm-hmm. and he's charged. What are his actual charges? Is it murder? Is it murder and attempted murder, murder for, and attempted a, for murder. a hit and run hit and run? Mm-hmm. OK, so you saw the video. I know you've commented about the video. So you haven't talked to your father about what happened, but you saw it yourself, right? Yeah. OK, so what what were your thoughts when you saw the video? Well, first, I'm not allowed to speak to him because, you know, they're, that's, they're still taking his voice about it. My only thing, every time I see the video, no, the video, I just question everything. Like, if it's self defense, why are they running up to the to the car? If you fear somebody, I'm not gonna run up to no car. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
And I know my father's conditions, you know, like I seen the, his eye. I, I was with him when he was starting to go blind. Mm -hmm. I'll start, he had me driving at 16, like mm -hmm. drive here. I never forget, we drove to San Diego and back. And I was like, man, this dude had me on all kind of missions with him. Mm -hmm. Nothing bad, I'm just saying. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. So do you feel that, do you feel that him being in jail, do you think he's being wrongly charged? You think it was self-defense from what you've seen, what you know? Oh, of course, it's all on the video. You mm -hmm. know, I don't gotta explain that. You know, and I'm always enough to stand up for my dad. That's the whole reason why I'm out speaking now. Cause mm -hmm. I'm not into this big, you know, oh, let me be public, this fame and all that. I got I feel like I have to be a voice for this man because he has none right now. None. Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. So now that he's in but he's he's in jail, does he get to write you all letters? No. So he can't write letters. No. He can't call anybody. Can't call anybody. He can't even pick, choose his own lawyer. So is he is he in solitary confinement? Yeah. They've been there for two years, and I don't see how anybody can act. That's not speaking to anybody, hearing anything. I don't see how he can stay mentally stable. Mm -hmm. right. wow. So why won't they let him choose his own attorney? That's <laughs> something I question all the time. Um, it's always back and forth with, with the other judge. You ask this one, you ask this one judge, what's going on? Why can't he? Why can't he do that? And he says, oh, you got to take it up to Judge Ryan. So it doesn't make any sense. So it's just like they're playing back and forth. They're just playing games with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So the stuff that went down with your dad, <clears throat> how has that affected you personally? I mean, the, not the lack of communication, but just in general in terms of him hey, being incarcerated again. Man, I'm not even going to start with anything being incarcerated. Uh, anything that affected my dad affected me or my mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Like the Straight Outta Compton movie, that had people th threaten me. Like I, that's why I didn't want to come out because I'm like, oh, man, y'all got people out here just want to hurt me. Like y'all thinking this dude, y'all got us making it seem like we hurt Easy e or something like that. And that never happened, you know, mm -hmm. like that. We not a, I'm not a monster, you know? Mm -hmm. I, and I worked too hard for this, for what I got, what I came here to do, you know? So the movie Straight Outta Compton created real life stuff in the streets? Yeah. For you, Most really? definitely. I, I was in Nashville, Tennessee. That's how bad it was. Mm -hmm. Nashville, Tennessee, uh, at, at HBCU, and I'm over here getting threats. Like you know? what type of threats? Like, oh, what's up, bro? Like, let's, let's get a pop, you know? Let's get, let's get a fight. I actually fought somebody. In, in Nashville? Nashville, yeah. Really? Yeah. Do you know why? It's because just the... What they think that yeah you're you know they're going off they going off of you know what they see in the films oh he he you think you bad or something like that I'm, I'm like, telling you with love, wait, wait, I'm telling you with love and hip hop when people see me on the show they believe everything that they're seeing like you can have an argument with one person for and that's real life right mm -hmm. not not the depiction of a real life story yeah, that could have happened right. they see something and they 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 believe that they're that other person's best friend so mm -hmm. I, so I I'm surprised to hear that they actually saw a movie and believe that. It was their role to get involved. But not in, not only that, in this day and age where everybody puts everything, documents everything on their phone, puts everything exactly. on video and YouTube, et cetera. Exactly. Like people feel like a come up or a way to get famous is to start a fight with somebody who, you know, the the obvious attention. I'm glad you brought that up. And it's, it's that's really true. Exactly what they did. And people really, really misunderstand what fame and infamy is. Exactly. You can be recognized for doing some dumb ass shit. So you're saying that's what happened. Or you were just no, exactly. That is exactly what happened. You took yeah. like that's that the whole scenario. I they remember, just wanted remember. to set you up yeah. so that they could put it on video. Exactly, because I remember the whole video. He was like, "Oh, get the cameras on about the beat, sugar nice son ass," and I'm mm -hmm. like, "Whoa, wow. whoa, mm -hmm. whoa!" Like that's not going down. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the and the thing that again, I'm telling you, that comes across in your interview is just how smart, articulate you mm -hmm. are. Um, and I think that people. I mean, of course, I have a preconceived notion of Suge Knight. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and act like mm -hmm. I've never heard the rumors. And mm -hmm. I mean, although I've met him, mm -hmm. you know, he's a person I've met from a distance. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get too caught up or too close because you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And and I think that his image and just the media and hip hop and the whole hip hop culture has created this big, huge perception of him that... Mm -hmm enters the room before he does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. And mm -hmm. do you think that, that has any of that spilled over to you because you're his son? Oh, no, I won't allow it. I'm not going to allow that. Um, I have my own projects that I work on. You know, I'm consulting a couple other artists now. Mm -hmm. I got one from Detroit. I just picked up pretty few. I got a little boy group that I'm working with too as well. Nice. And then I'm also working on, um, right now this week, I'm shooting for a couple uh, for a network that you guys are pretty familiar with nice. for VH1. Mm -hmm. So nice. uh, y'all see what's going So it's nice to on. be known completely opposite of what your father was or mm -hmm. is or compl or the perception of what he the is perception. because his Excuse perception me. from what i've read is your interaction and your experience is very different than what we know of your father mm -hmm. from yeah. the media i'm not going to lie to when they when i got the notification notification that we're going to be interviewing 
uh, Suge Knight's son. I said, oh, shit. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Because you know, I met your father actually about five five years ago on, at Wild and Out. Yeah. He was with Irv Gotti. And I remember being at the bar for the after party. And I seen him. I said, oh, shit, nigga. That's Suge Knight. Let me turn the fuck around. And your father heard me. And he laughed. He just laughed. Yeah, exactly. And he came on me. He shook me. He said, what's up, man? You good? And and that's the only that's the memory I have. So just to see his son here just completely like you look like him like you uh, he can't be on Maury uh, saying you ain't his son yeah man <laughs> that's, i gotta see my little brother man that's a replica wow man. yeah it's so, boy it's, six three only 190 pounds 13. wow damn <laughs> what do okay you so God, when damn. you're so when your mother she put out a book yeah what was the name of your mother's book uh my life with the night my life with the night so what was nice your time. what was her and your experience when she put that book out oh man i was there for my mom man because that that book broke her down because it was already bad enough that people th- was thinking it's a tell-all book and it's against suge because you already see the only bad things about suge that's mm-hmm. actually one of the good things that's about she says she wrote about him you know my mom he changed my mom's life you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and stormy's really solid yeah she's for a real. solid when LA did the book girl. come out uh, it was a few years ago a few, right? few years ago yeah okay. Right now, she's going through her little publishing deal, like, deal right now with them because, you know, people were acting kind of janky, so we got to fix to fix that. So she's working on a different project as well. So me and Melissa <laughs> were talking about going to Japan on Friday mm-hmm. uh, because we're, I'm taking a trip, and now she's tagging along. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gio Happily. just made up a lie that he was going to Japan. Well, we know damn well he don't have frequent going flyer miles. Nagaro, N- Nagasaki. I have, actually have a million and Sug, miles. Sug, And Suge is going back to Compton. <laughs> so look, we're all going places. <laughs> Crenshaw or Compton? Is that um, the same Com- thing? Com- 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 I don't go past Wilshire. And I, I, I say <laughs> (laughs) this is a joke on the show but i have to keep it real i'm gonna tell a quick story i first moved to la i'm from the bay area right you Mm -hmm. know i used to be in the streets but of course i found god changed my life so Mm -hmm. i'm out here i one time i get a call from a friend who says can you come pick me up from el segundo i don't know where el segundo is so i just put Mm -hmm. it in my map thing whatever and i go Mm -hmm. i get off a freeway this don't look like a el segundo this looks like (laughs) something else so i get out of my car now mind you mind you mind you i felt like i was being a little fashionable i had a blue rock aware jean jacket oh god man hold on hold on i had blue jeans because i had to match Uh and i had on some chucks because i like converse (laughs) so i get out right my my jacket has a hoodie and i walk up to a taco truck because i'm lost so i need directions (laughs) this in the 90s this was 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> this, is 2000, this is 2007. Oh, I, and my friends shit. in the car were in a hoopty, by the way. Look like a car you still don't do a drive-by in. So I walk over to the taco truck and I say to the guy, I say, hey man, y'all know where um, the Elsa, this street is Elsa, in El Segundo? The look they gave me, they all looked at me and and they, and they I'm just being friendly, you know? Yeah. They were like, they were like, nigga, you ain't from here, huh? I said, nah. They said, where you from? I said, no, they said, you don't know where you are? I said, no, I was in Watts. Yeah. Ooh. And they said, um, get the fuck up out of here. I said, not a problem. I'm <laughs> on my way out, and I ain't never coming back. So the person you was going to see, they just never saw you? No, they didn't see me. In fact, <laughs> in fact I don't think we've talked Talk about that. that. <laughs> you took me into some uncharted shit. So anyway, that's why when I make the joke about not going past Wilshire, shout out to Watts. Y'all inspired that. That's yeah. hilarious. So one of the most infamous moments with your father uh, was when your father was at the Source Awards and mm. stood up there. And I will never forget Danny Boy, Snoop, the whole, and what I loved about the Death Row camp uh, uh and <laughs> was that they were i mean you're talking about an era in music where they were ki- i don't want to say killing shit but they were in terms of <laughs> yes it you was know break, of, locking yes. shit down yes. okay yeah when you saw that because you were probably a baby then mm-hmm, right you're a baby yeah, okay super. so you've seen it since what does that what does that ref- like how what what is the connection you make to that when you see that I don't, well i know my father mm. and i, I kind of get his where he was coming from on that mm. on that part People thought he was kind of punking at somebody and all that, but no, he just saying, you know, if you don't want somebody beating all in your videos, man, Dance you know, get, get you know, get take care of business, they take care of business, mm-hmm. man. I so said, I'm not trying to be in your video, <laughs> dude. I'm trying to get you some millions, you know. Right. He Pac had the best deal at that time, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like that. Wow. Was, your father bailed him out of jail, yeah, and then gave him a crazy, crazy amount of money, and then dropped All Eyes on Me, which is probably the best rap G- album that I've ever See, heard. See, this was my look, Jimmy Iovine. Look, my dad, Jimmy Iovine <laughs> called my father up, and he was like. um, well, he's about to release Pac from Interscope because he was about to leave Pac in there for dead in jail. So my he was he told my he gave Pac my dad for like he gave Pac to my dad for free. Mm-hmm. Really, he was just like, hey, you can have him. Like here, whatever. You we don't know what to do with him. 
So my pop was like, we're all right, no problem. That's when he paid the bill. When he paid the bill, he said, sign these papers, man. Let's get, let's get to work. And after that, he never left the studio. And that's what, and that's what happened. Did you get to meet Tupac? I was just about to ask Tupac, that. Tupac was actually my godfather. So yeah. I, I didn't, I, like, if he was still alive, we would be up. But, you know, that's if why. Was still, if he was still alive, she'd be fucking him. Oh, yeah. I ain't nothing I wrong think with so, that. Because you want to, because you want to, um, um, oh, Jesus, please. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm, I, I would. I might agree with that. He was <laughs> finally. He, he's, 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 he was. He's my type. She he was my here. just we a little on the grandma. short side. I what? Mean, we call her grandma because she never meant to who she was smashed. But thank you. That's nice. Stop finally. saying the word smash. Oh my god. Have a sex. Lady. Anyway, we're with. being rude to our guests. <laughs> so I want to ask Tupac, Tupac any go ahead, memories. Go ahead. I mean, you, any, nothing. Nah, I can't have too all. much. You know, he mm. died before I was even like able to have some memories right. of him. Only that's why it kind of kills me when people. uh Say like, oh, your father killed this man. Like, how did like, come on, man. My dad went to a, he went to a deep depression after that. You know, that was his best friend. Yeah. So what do you? So has your father ever talked to you about about um, Tupac and that whole night of whatever happened in that car? Only asked him one time because it really, I know that's a sensitive topic to him. Right. And I seen him how he was looking like, like you know, did you? I asked him, you know, I was like, oh, pops, did you? No, you know, just let me know. Like, did you really do that? He's like, come on, man, like. He said he he, got, he grabbed my hand and he said fill this up here and it was still the it's still bullet. the bullet up in his head and that's why I was like man I knew better like he could have nah. lost his life that exactly day. the reason Pac actually saved his life that's what he told he me hit Pac first before he hit up your father Pac actually tried to go through the sunroof and wow. that's why most of his shots is in his abdomen area wow. and my dad ducked right here mm -hmm. so that's when that's Pac really <laughs> saved his life that's mm -hmm. when, why why he, why would he kill him mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense yeah. and I see they're they're currently auctioning that car off for one point five yeah that's million. sick that's that's terrible I don't I yeah. don't agree with that you know why can't they put that in a museum you know that's, I, that's I agree I agree. And so your father, because one thing I can say is that your father's presence in his office, like you felt like you were in the king's kingdom. You mm -hmm. know, it was like he 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 didn't he ruled it very much so. And mm -hmm. I think the people had a lot of respect for him. You talking about death row? Like death the, row. The, 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 yeah. Oh man, that that was my playground because that's mm -hmm. where I believe really grew up in. Yeah. Well, that, that's why I probably no, you can probably, see kids running. Around. It was probably you. I'm telling you, there was kids running around. It was a friendly kind of situation. You just couldn't go past. A certain part of the carpet, but <laughs> and there was oh, armed no. security there to make sure you didn't go past right. that in the carpet. But right. yeah, can I ask you what's one of your most fondest memories mm -hmm. of with your father? Take away the death row, take away the oh, fame. That's a great question. Um, Shout out to Gio asking a great question. Hey. For real, yeah, that was a great question for real. <laughs> It doesn't, um, it doesn't happen that often. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. But go ahead. He, he didn't turn into Barbara Walters for this interview. Um, honestly, it would probably be winning that football championship while my dad was there supporting me. You know, the Crenshaw Championship. He was there. Your and dad it, was a football player. Yeah, he Do you guys play the same position? No, heck no. What? His father. I mean, okay, listen. Okay. Uh, you see that door right there? Yeah. <laughs> His dad is no, you're, no, no, okay. You're right. You're right. Well, your, your dad was like, what, an offensive lineman? Yeah, he was a uh, defensive end. A defensive end. So, yeah. cornerback? No, I was more of a running back, tailback, yeah, yeah. slot. Okay. Okay. But so I, he won. He saw you win that championship. Yeah, yeah, and he was proud of me. You know, my dad. That's what we all talked about. We were all football. we're all football people. That's a football guy still to this day. You know mm -hmm. that he still pushed for me. Me and him kind of kind of clashed when when I didn't when I took that um, academic route to Fisk. Oh, he wanted you. He, to be he a still wanted me player. to put. He still wanted me to push it because he saw my talent. So mm -hmm. I was just like, Nah, pops, I got a different vision right now. So when y'all was we would get into these debates or arguments, well, like would it get heated? Would it be like a like, what, was he a stern father? Was he? Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely, he, he he was definitely like you know, son. I support you, you know, but I feel like you really should. Like he he was annoying with it. He's like, he would even go to dinner and be like, hey everybody, yeah, yeah. So you are gonna be playing football, right? And I'm like, oh man, like come on, come on. Like I didn't get this, I didn't get the offers on anybody, you know, but I did get an academic. I think that says something, you know. I think that says a lot. Like yeah. that's that's really interesting because a lot of people. You know, a lot of black men are sold that dream. Exactly. You know, when it comes to, you know, being athletically gifted, they would be more inclined to go to take that route in order to, you know, get the fame and the fortune and, mm -hmm. and whatever else comes along with being a professional um, NFL player. But to actually take the academic route shows a lot of, you know, just. It's, it shows a lot. It shows a lot of character. Look, thank you. You know, at, at, a, at such a young age, too. Yeah. Like you really kind of seem like you own who you are. I had you know? to. You know, that's knowing his name. You know, my dad even told my mom before naming me, like, you think he'd be ready? Like, he got to be ready, you know? Yeah. So it, I took a huge name. I took a huge role. So I know yeah. what role I'm taking. Yeah. So WAC 100 used to work for your father. I didn't know that, but that's crazy. You didn't know that? I'm just finding out right You've now. You've never heard that? No. Ever? 
ever. Okay, so no he, diss, no diss. I'm yeah, just like yeah. I probably wasn't involved in that business. You know. Okay, so when you see what's happening nowadays with, I mean, your father clearly had a, a significant influence on street culture mm -hmm. as well as popular culture and entertainment. But he had a lot of influence on street culture, in particular the Pyru gang. My brother was a Pyru. He died when I was 19, so about 10 years, oh, 20 man, years ago. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I keep forgetting how old I am. I lie so much. <laughs> he died 20 years ago. <laughs> Thanks. And and I was uh, I interviewed Soldier Boy and Floyd Mayweather about this fight that Soldier was supposed to have with Chris. When you see kind of how nowadays entertainers are politic in the street gang life, what do you think of that? Do you even have an opinion? It ruins the music. You mm -hmm. know, it's not it's taking the whole focus off of music. You know, you know people. That see, ain't, that ain't, this that guy ain't, is smart. I'm telling you, that ain't about how you sell your records. You know, that ain't good. Like that's not even promoting black people in a mm -hmm. good light. You know, mm -hmm. so that's why I don't really agree with all of it. Mm -hmm. You know. Because I'll say that what happened with your father and Puffy mm -hmm. years ago at the Source Awards or mm -hmm. Snoop or whoever started or whatever, it wasn't the gang stuff that drove that conversation, that interaction. It was hip hop. It yeah. was West Coast versus East, East Coast, Coast. And it became about the music. It ended up being violent later, but it was about the hip hop. But yeah, you see, they weren't involved with that. But it was that's people what that, that it was just that. And um, it took a life of its own. Exactly. And so do you feel like now that gang like this? Do you feel like now artists want to act gang like they're gang members in order to be validated as artists, or what is that? I, know, I question everything about the artists now. You know, mm -hmm. you got some of them that that's going like I, I like the music. Don't get me wrong, the music, the, the talent is there. It's just now it's kind of confusing. You know, you got some artists with some savagery, crazy, and they all chaotic with the guns, and then you got some of them that's real mumbleish, mumbleish. You don't know what they're saying, and you hear what they're saying. And he's <laughs> like. All right, bro. Like I get it. And then you take <laughs> and then you take out the drugs in it. What do you, what are they really saying? Because when yeah. you look at California Love, if you look at all the Tupac, Dre, Snoop, uh, even Puffy and Biggie, mm. that wasn't that. It was all about lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like you think of Big's exactly. video, the yeah. house parties, yeah. it was movies, like, yeah. niggas. You know, and what it's saying? changed now. Yeah, it's changed dramatically. What do you think about Michelle? A? Oh man, I don't. I'm not too bright from her, you know. I don't like. I'm not into dissing women because I'm, I'm a man myself. Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't really, you know. I question a, a lot of things about that lady, you know. Her, I'm really disappointed that she came out saying that oh, my dad hit her, you know. And that's mm -hmm. not cool, you know. We're like, we we know what's the real about that. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't get into the picture with Suge really until after, after she had the baby, and that's in 06, I want to mm -hmm. say about. So that's like, man, and plus you, that's the lady that. Had a baby. That's Dre baby mama for one. Right. Let's mm -hmm. keep that one hundred because everybody want to know. They keep saying Shug. No, let's say it's Shug and Dre's baby mama. So, mm -hmm. so I don't know. That's a it's a lot of questionable things because Shug and Dre were partners. Exactly. Right. So and that's not cool. NWI. And her baby, the first baby was with your dad Dre. with Dre, and then she had a baby by your father. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then now she sold this Lifetime movie that did pretty well in terms of numbers, but it made your father and Dr. Dre it look painted like them in a guys. horrible light. Horrible. And, light, and did man. you watch it? No, of course not. I ain't watch that, man. I ain't gonna support nothing like that. You know, that's one what? thing I get about him is he gonna fight for his father to the death. Yeah, because like, that, that's back. not cool. But my biggest problem with that is why? Why you? Why would you put that? Put that out? Why this man doesn't have a voice at mm -hmm. all? Mm -hmm. and, you know, he's going through court right now. He's, the public eye is looking at him right now. So do you feel like because if Shug was on the street, people wouldn't be taking shots of Shug? Do you feel like now because he is incarcerated, he's just an easy target? They feel like he's not getting out, so I'm just gonna make my money and do what I need to do. Of course, you know you got you got you got this new what people using it now as oh, I'm about to suge knight you. Like what that's <laughs> supposed to mean, bro? Like suge knight was all about business. It wasn't mm -hmm. about shooting nobody, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all hear, you know. But that's not that's not facts. It's mm -hmm. not factual. I don't I don't respect it, you know. How do you separate yourself from the streets, given that they have so much respect for you and your father? giving back to the community and changing those lives out out in the community mm -hmm. you know that's what you do you know you don't you don't add on more fuel to the fire mm -hmm. you know you take those people out you know that mm -hmm. you start up a you start up a security company or something like that then you hire your own people's in that in that area you know you provide find, opportunity exactly mm -hmm. yeah you provide hope that's right now i'm trying mm -hmm. to provide hope that's so, what you want so to get tell out. us you say you're having an event tell us about that the um, the event for the this the this the protest rally that's out in downtown, you know, in front of the thing. I'm trying to try to have a couple shirts that's going to be ready for some people, you know, probably a couple of roller skates with some ladies. My mom even did. She gave me the idea because mm -hmm. she did it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So I think it was kind of good, good that we um, we broke, we born that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before your father got incarcerated this last time, um, he got shot too. Yeah. He got shot six times, I think. He got shot, he got shot more than Pac and walked out. <laughs> wow. wow. 
So do you know anything about what ha- that happened? I know it was at Chris Brown's table at One Oak. Inside the club, he got shot in the club. Yeah, in one when was that? When Man. Was that? This is like two years ago? This yeah. kind of flew under the radar. but yeah, it, A little yeah, bit. Yeah. But I was in the streets. I, 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 yeah, I remember. I remember. I, remember. I know you're talking about. I had a couple a couple girls around that time. Like, oh my gosh, I just seen your dad get shot. And he walked out like, oh man, like. I remember. I remember. Oh, he legit walked out he of the club. Legit yeah. walked out of the club, Jesus. walking to the to the six, to the yeah six times. Six times. Do you ever? Were you ever afraid for your father? Like, did you did you ever? That night, after that night, I was at school at Fisk. My roommate Zay, he, I woke up. He said, "Bro, your dad, he got shot." And I'm thinking, like, all I ask is, "Is he alive?" He said, "Yeah." I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'm I'm cool after that. I was like, right, whoa. Right. I was kind of shook like, for a second. So I was like, man. That dude, guys, he seriously has an angel, but he has he seriously has a purpose for this life. For a reason and you know what? I worth. agree with you on that. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand or see it, but I can see like when you've been through what your father's been through for this many decades, he definitely has a calling on his life. Most definitely, man. I, are you religious? Are you in? Most de- yeah, hey, heck yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't, I go, I go. That's my biggest weapon right now. That's what I'm working with. That's you've how never, I got here. So you've never been affiliated with any type of gang or anything like that. No, no, I'm not. A, no, I'm not a gang member because my dad didn't. He didn't. We didn't talk about that. That it wasn't brought to the house. You know, right. my mom didn't tolerate that. My dad didn't tolerate it. It was all about business. You know, mm-hmm. he figured them. The gang stuff, that's 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 little dudes, that's little nigga shit, you know? Mm. Like, that ain't that ain't true. Mm. And that well, is yeah, his I mean, Shook wasn't known as being a guy in the streets. Shook yeah. was known as being the street. Yeah. Exactly. He was the boss. It's I mean, regular. that was you know, and I think he's built I mean, if you look at Tupac and where Tupac was, Tupac was born on the East Coast, came over to the West Coast in the Bay Area. But it wasn't really until, I mean, we knew about him from Digital Underground, we knew about his music, but mm-hmm. it wasn't until he joined Death Row and became the Star. That's when it became yeah. Tupac. That exactly. became a, that it became an icon. Yeah. And if you think about the music he's produced, and even after that, because the one thing I do remember for being around too, was how much music is still out there that's still not even released. Oh man, yeah, that's that's, but that's out of my, you know, that's out of my jurisdiction. So, but now that your father's that. in gone, I mean, father's in jail. I mean, he isn't locked away. I mean, he hasn't been sentenced. But now that he's in jail, who's running the all of that? Like, are you involved in the business of it or no? Oh no, I'm that's, I'm hands off from that. I think I believe that business in Canada somewhere. Okay. So I, that's why I'm working on starting my own thing. Okay. You know, that's why I have my own consulting own artist and then starting my own label. That's what's uh, Overnight Entertainment. Okay. I was about that Overnight Entertainment. So talk to us about Fisk University and your experience there. So what, what what were you studying there? I know you were there on an athletic scholarship, but what were you studying? No, I wasn't there. I was on an academic. Oh, um, academic scholarship. Yeah, they didn't have sport. They they didn't have football for sports. Um, oh, wow. I went there to start as a political science major. Then oh, I nice. switched over to go to a computer science. I switched, I switched over to computer science, and that's okay. what I have my love for because I'm really good with computers. Okay. I did my first internship at Fisk University. The nice. next one I was um, getting ready to do was to, for Google. Okay. Because my wow. professor, yeah, they was they was plugging me in. That's, that's why I really love Fisk. I have a, like they even reached out after that straight out of Compton. They, um, the psychologist came out to me to gave like want to do therapy classes with me, but I was like nothing wrong with me. Like good, she, bro. she, yeah, she was like, um, I haven't seen Straight Out of Compton. Is it that intense? It's a, I, I know a it's good a great film. movie. It's a good film. I heard it's a good film, yeah. but I heard it's a good film. You haven't seen you know, Straight Out of Compton? No. Uh, Cause Cause I can, no, only because I can't really sit through a whole movie. It's really hard. You do have ADD like a mofo. It's horrible. I need yeah. to go see Get Out. That's why I need to go see I'm going to go see Get Out. Movie, bro. Yeah. Great. I just yeah. saw it last night. For yeah, I need to go see that one. I definitely want to see Straight Outta Compton was great for the nostalgic factor, you mm. know, <clears throat> because of all the music um, and because mainly the music and the mm. actors, you mm. know, it was really awesome to watch Ice Cube's son, um, O'Shea Jackson, who yeah. looks like his replica. I got something like, to say. <laughs> yeah, that all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then we all have personal friends who are in the movie. Yeah, shout um, out to Will Packer who produced. Hey man, Will Packer produced. I was almost DJ movie. Yellow, man. That you could have so been DJ I Yellow. Side note, yellow. side note, I just saw D Ray the other night. I don't know why, because y'all he like, light skin, green he eyes. Me the sequel. Let fun. me ask you: Are you friends with any of the people from like our Easy's children? Oh uh, no, nah, no, nah. yeah. especially now when he coming out with the, that uh, saying that Easy, uh, my dad gave him Easy A's or something like that. Wait, yeah, that was kind of right. ignorant, man. So where did that rumor originate? Because I actually read that online that yeah, the allegation um, was your father gave Easy AIDS. That's crazy. I don't know that that just sounds ignorant and like I wouldn't take the person who asked me that question seriously. Mm. How did somebody give you AIDS unless they were sexually active? Mm. I mean, we know mm. we didn't. They, it wasn't sexually active with each other, mm-hmm. so that doesn't make any sense. You know, yeah. they talking about oh, you know, he had the large, you know, he had him injected. Like, come on, man, who goes that far? Mm. Like that man. 
If somebody makes three hundred million, though, well, it's not trying to kill someone. One rapper. So why did he start that rumor? What was his motivation? Do you think that was just for attention, or I can't speak on that, man. You know, I, I don't. I don't know. You know, I just don't. I don't think. I don't think it's a good route for him. Mm-hmm. I think he should make his own spotlight, and not live in his. Because mm-hmm. I'm not trying to live in my father's spotlight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's all I could kind of say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so now, as an advocate for your father, <laughs> who's in jail, facing fighting these charges, and who publicly it looks like he's having some health issues, right? Yes. Is he getting health? Is he getting health care in there, or is he getting the proper care yep. that he needs? Oh uh, man, definitely not, definitely not. That's um. Wow. What, what what ailments does he have? Because you mentioned that he's having problems with yes. his eyesight, you know, close to this being di- legally diabetes. blind. Diabetes, diabetes is going bad, and his blood clots. And going into mm. the court, he was telling me, "Man, I almost died three times mm-hmm. because of his blood clots." Because they're not letting him fully heal. Even right. the doctors is like, "You can't send Suge back into solitary confinement. Like he's not in no shape or head weight." But yeah. it's the DA, mm-hmm. and the DA. That's who I really question about right now because. Mm-hmm. Not even when in the courtroom is you got my dad and you got and all everybody in the back is just is me sitting with the lawyers and I'm like whoa why is the lawyer sitting back here why you why should, why can't you sit up there with my father and speak to him but the DA can sit next to the prosecutor and now they're not knowing that do wow. do they is there is there excuse for why they're treating your father that way in terms of confining him to having contact with nobody is because they believe he can intimidate witnesses or something like that like is there an order that removed his rights because I mean he has the constitutional rights of having. It's obvious that yeah. they're doing that, but what's where's the evidence of him doing that? Mm-hmm. You know, like there, there's no, there's nothing like you can't. I, I don't see any no fear. There, it's just only myths and lies. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you had who was that? Well, yeah, I mean, there are rumors your father hung Vanilla Ice over the. Yeah, but Vanilla Ice came out and said he did it. Right. That was in his own documentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, what a nasty geographic. What facing Suge mm-hmm. Knight? Come on now, mm-hmm. you can't. You can't. That's the why facts I, are there. Yeah, exactly. If you want to look for him, and then he's the he's the victim. And the victim is saying that. Then what? Well, why are we still dealing with the situation? Mm-hmm. So if you had so the words that we read in the BET interview to describe your father, you know, murderer, all the different words that the public or the media has said. How, what are the words that you would use to describe him? Oh, my, my father. Your father. Shit, strong. You know, strong, yeah. wise, businessman. You know, influential. Mm-hmm. He, whatever anybody say, he still had a big impact on everybody. You know, everybody now wants he to be provided that. for a lot of people. Exactly. He's, everybody wants to be that big businessman now. Mm-hmm. They want to. They want to still take that sugar roll. But not even just the business, because you know the plaques, you know the awards, you know the music. But he really did give back to the community. Most I mean, definitely. I remember them driving this big old damn. Uh, not SUV, but what are those things? Diesels, you know, mm-hmm. big with the flatbed. Yeah. yeah. Full of toys. When I mean full, I mean to the top. And I remember it was disorganized, so people were kind of snatching this, throwing it. Mm-hmm. And then he showed up and he made everything stop until it was organized and laid out for the families properly so kids could pick the toys they wanted and mm. the food was there. And it was just like it was literally in a parking lot in somewhere past Wilshire. <laughs> I don't remember the community, but I remember that because I remember going to death row with Danny mm-hmm. Boyd. I remember right. Rage, and I remember just it was like a family. It was this caravan that went over and well, I just seen Danny Boyd at the Floyd party. So yeah. shout out to Danny. So Did you have Floyd's party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Saturday, yeah. Oh, we were there. Okay. You were there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You were there? Yeah. Oh wow. Wait, it was hot. Danny Boyd was there? Yeah. Wow. That's a throwback. I don't know. It, it was it was hot though. You know, Tyrese performed. That's yeah. why that's when I had to grab a little chick. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. All you I are, saw was Transformers. You are, you are your father's son. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let me ask you: Do you think there will ever be a movie made or uh, about your father? Or they're on, they're working on it now. That's what they're working uh, on now. Yeah, I've been speaking to them about it. So mm. it's it's a pretty good news about it. I, it's coming out. It's nice. Coming out. Who's kind it's of handling dope. your father's legacy and just is is that. Has that been left up to you or who else? The is legacy? No, nah, he, he's about to get out, so I'll leave he's it up to him. Alive. Yeah, no, he's still alive. No, I know. We ain't I, talking about Whitney Houston. No, 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 no. I know that. But in, in terms of, like, I mean, it, in, in, the, in, the, in the event that he doesn't get out or in the event that anything I happens. I thought you just had a mild a symptom of Tourette's or something. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> I'm glad you got out whatever the fuck you were going to say. You're pulling a Giovanni. That's the shit you do. I am now feeling an insane amount of sympathy for Giovanni and how we treat him. I'm not. No. So, so Melissa, the dynamics of our show, he's not the brightest person. I graduated top 10 from Western High School, Gary, Indiana. What's up? I need to see the receipts. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't. I need to see the receipts from that Cracker Jack High School. But anyway. He, he's not the brightest, and sometimes it's because we are so smart and we are kind of more elite than him, we oh, tend Jason, we, we tend to be on the same page. She's trying to behave today because 
our viewers are tired of us ganging up on him. <laughs> Boss. So we're being nice to you today because, oh, please. You just said gangbang before he came in. So. Oh, man. <laughs> said gang. Anyway, back to Suge and more important things. Okay, so, I, I, you know, what I love about reading your story, when they asked me what about interviewing you, you know, I was just like, what I love about it is that you really are a good advocate for your father. And yeah. that the thing about what you're doing is that you're actually humanizing him because people don't look at Suge Knight yeah. as a human. They look at him as a figurehead, as a... As a as a headline, mm-hmm. as a as just a, a person, source of fear, a source of fear, or yeah. just a or just a person in music. Yeah. you get to actually know a him villain. personally, a villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right now I actually feel like I'm his only advocate right now because mm-hmm. I, I feel I'm kind of I question everybody. I'm like, man, I, I did this all in one day, y'all. Well, what, what have y'all been doing? Mm-hmm. Now y'all want to call me. Now y'all want to be. Oh, hey, what's up, bro? Like, no, that ain't how that ain't how it work. Man, I'm not rocking like that, you know. And the thing I like about this example mm-hmm. too is, and I'll just say this: this is an example to people like Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. Because I just seen your interview about that. That was hot. But people that provide so much for so many people, when you need them, yeah. they ain't there. Right. Yeah. That shit's fucked up. Yeah. And that's why, you know, people always say to me, like, damn, you just the say scavengers, what they, you, the you, parasites you, looking for a host. You, no, they just people say to me, fleas you, looking for a dog. Well, I'm trying to say what people say to me. We ain't talking oh. about no damn fleas. <laughs> Sorry. What people will say <laughs> to me, attention. like people will say to me, like, they can't believe how honest I can be with Floyd and how I talk to him. That's and how what he I'm loves most about him. you though. Because in the end, who's going to really be there? Right. When you're spending money, like his father, the way that he, he, he provided for a lot of people, there's different sides to everybody, different mm-hmm. multiple layers to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But, you know, where are they now? Yeah. Man, I tell you, that, that first week of him being in there, all the little ladies, anybody that was there around that entourage that we was out, because I was hanging out, I was on winter break with my father, um, was before, he that week before. Because he actually, she dropped me off the week before the, um, the whole... Uh, hit and run incident mm-hmm. or no self defense incident. <clears throat> um, I, he dropped me off at the airport, and that was the last time I seen him talk to him and anything like that. But before then, when that, after that happened, that whole crowd of people that love Shook was just mm-hmm. nowhere to be found. Mm-hmm. Nobody's mm-hmm. phones are answering. I'm like, wow, ghost like, town, ghost town, really, literally. So mm-hmm. I was just like, whoa, like kind of hurt me. Like, what, what would you say to the critics? I'm sorry, what would you say to the critics of your father? The people that would say, well, of course you're going to say all this because you're a you're son and, right. you know, you don't, you, you, you're forcing yourself to believe this because this isn't the real Suge Knight. What would you say to those people? Well, just pull, just show me the facts. Where, where, where's the real, where's the real facts of him being a violent monster? Don't use it. Don't use this. Don't use this video that's out right now. What's, mm-hmm. where are the other facts? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, I can't see it. I can, I, I, I can, I can pitch you with more facts of him being good than actually being negative. Right. right. So. I mean, that's one thing with the entertainment business. Like Michael Jackson did a billion great things for people, but they always, and people only, I think, are programmed to remember the bad. Yeah. Right. This, you can just look, you can just Google my father's image right now, and you can see that they have, not, they don't even have the best image of him up mm-hmm. when you say Suge Knight, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. On Wikipedia and Google. Mm-hmm. It's, it's always some. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what um, what other face. what other media outlets have you reached out to to try and you know get your story out get the story out about what's happening to your father and the um, the mistreatment that he's I spoke um, I did I did I did one with XXL magazine mm-hmm. um, uh, Vibe did mm-hmm. something with them mm-hmm. I did uh, right now I'm doing something with you guys I did the second interview with BET that was kind of hot I love that mm-hmm. they were pretty nice people mm-hmm. um, right now I'm just reaching out you mm-hmm. know yeah. have you attempted to get in touch with you know any kind of uh, low level or local politicians that could, you know, possibly get you into the DA's office to, I don't. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking, this, this I'm seems talking like to a the, very hairy situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking, I'm talking to the lawyer about that. Cause I'm like, um, I really want to go to down to USC because mm-hmm. there's what I've been told is that the DA's, they actually had the needles. Rem- they took the needles out of my dad's, like the IVs out of his arm now instead of the nurses. So I just want to get that footage of that and see him and take that. Well, one thing I would love to do, we'll offer to do is if you want to have my camera crew go with you to try to visit your dad, we'll do that. Most definitely. And we'll put that out and we'll make sure all our friends at all the other outlets pick it up. Because at the end of the day, like you can't see him, you can't talk to him, you can't advocate. How can you properly advocate for somebody you can't even touch? Oh, man. Yeah. I remember when I first, first came out to L.A. because I don't even live in L.A. at the time. I was Mm -hmm. living in Arizona on my own. Um, I came out to visit and... I was told I had visitation. When I went there, they were like, no, nobody has visitation. And mm. I was shut down. I'm like, wow, really? Like, I just came so far. Like, guys, I just came out of... So like, you haven't seen your father in two years. He's already yeah. said since he went to the airport. Since he went to the mm-hmm. airport. If you don't wake so up and I am, remember... Listen, let me... I'm, first off, I'm, I'm going back over it. I'm back. No, because I'm already distracted. Uh, Melissa's new hairdo yeah. looks listen, like... Listen... Bo- no, you look... No, you know who you look like sitting <laughs> over there today? 
You look like Lil Rick Mama. Rick James. Fuck you. You look like Lil Mama. <laughs> okay, you know what? Have a- Lil Mama Gorgeous. I actually seen her at Let the floor okay. party. Thank yeah, you. Thank Mama, you. Lil Mama Gorgeous. Right, she cool. little, I saw her at the party. She kind of gave, me the, she she gave me the side eye like a motherfucker. <laughs> no, she was on the stage. I thought she was about to take somebody's mic. I forgot who was rapping, but she was rapping their words, and she was getting closer and closer to them. I said, if she take that mic. She showed me but a lot hold, of love. But hold on. She is, I told her, I was like, you have been looking incredible recently. Sorry. I, and I do not mean that in a shady way. You only She's said that been... because I said you look like her today. No. We have this thing. Yes. L- little mama was supposed to do our show. She didn't show up. So we put her picture on the chair and we interviewed the chair. <laughs> <laughs> we tend to be shady. And Y'all funny. <laughs> it's me, Giovanni, little mama, and uh, no, it's Rick James. <laughs> Listen, both of you can kiss my fucking ass. Okay. It's big enough. I personally but don't want Low to. Key, but I, 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 I have a beautiful girl. Every I man that comes on our show Babe. peeps your ass yeah, we, listen okay girls look at my ass girls look hey, wait, at ass i'm sorry can you fix your bangs please <laughs> <laughs> like curtains like, go kick <laughs> you know what i came in on your side today i'm on your side too okay i'm on your yeah. side too okay yeah. back back to it being a love fest okay back so, to suge let's let suge <laughs> shut well, the qu- show well first i did have a question because you know sure. obviously we're living in some very oh yeah like in Harry times an unheard of political unheard of political environment right now so obviously we ask all of our guests you know what what mm-hmm. their thoughts on Trump is was is Fisk an HB, um, yes, HBCU. HBCU okay yes. so the presidents of HBCUs were just in the White House where mm-hmm. Con- Kellyanne Conway was caught looking like a thought sitting <laughs> on the couch um and so the reason for them being there was they're hoping that you know President Trump is going to funnel some funding their way what what's your opinion on Trump as a president you know how he's been doing so far and just in general, you know, um, I want any. I want an educated black man's opinion. Obviously, I didn't vote for the guy. You yeah, know? but um, now I have to, you know, I have to, I have to accept. I have to support my president because I don't want to look crazy. You know, mm-hmm. that you know that's our leader at the end of the day. <laughs> um, I can only hope and wish for the best. You know, I kind of am kind of questionable about this man so when I first seen him get mm-hmm. into office. Because I'm like, you know, people don't know this man had three companies that failed. Mm-hmm. Not through him, not him personally, but mm-hmm. his companies that failed mm-hmm. economically. Now mm-hmm. we've trusted him to be in economics. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't understand either. Mm. What, so were you gonna ask a follow-up question about the HBCUs? No, 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 oh. that was ju- that was just basically it because it just turned into a fiasco. You know, I mean, like all these, the, the presidents came there and they were hoping that it was going to kind of turn out one way into, you know, a, a, a legitimate conversation about increasing funding for their colleges. And universities, and it turned into a photo op, mm-hmm. and they were literally like a friend yeah. of mine is the president is one of the presidents of um I forget which university he it used to be a black one, <laughs> Morehouse. <laughs> His name's Walter Kimbrough, okay, and he went on record talking about the the situation. He was just like, we literally did not get more than two minutes to talk each, and there was fifteen of us or something like that in the room, and only seven of us seven of us got to talk. It's just like the photo op was just so pr- so Trump could be around a bunch of black people smiling, mm-hmm. kind of validating yeah, you, him. Yeah, you got you got you got to kind of like I have to know what's going on. Yeah, you got to read between the lines what's going on about that one. Yeah, Kellyanne so. Conway showed us exactly what was going on. Yeah. So if you could spend the night with one Kardashian, which one would it be? Oh, <laughs> I. <would. laughs> Oh my god. You know, I know I have nothing against the Kardashians and all that, but you know, that they're just not my type. You know? Really? Not at all. Uh, so Kim Kardashian was swinging and banging that poom poom all in your For, face. First of Wait, all, what? what where did the Wait, show just swinging go? Swinging and banging. That poom poom okay. all in his face. You ain't gonna That is it. why when I met your girlfriend <laughs> on Thursday, we I believe shocked. she was better than you. <laughs> because my anyway, girl noticed my so job. So going back to Suge, we're going Can to Can you ask a question? No, bro? we no. have had we have had He listen, answered it. Listen. We had an educated black man come in here, a son who is fighting for his father's freedom. We had this him go on record about how he feels all these people have conspired sorry, okay. against his father. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, not man. I'm not done reading you yet. <laughs> uh, how his father is being attacked by all these people who are opportunistic. Okay, I'm sorry, Jay. We even asked him an intellectual Sad conversation, emotion. being that he's gone to Fisk University. On an academic, Don't shake your goddamn bangs. On an academic, pri- <laughs> hold on, on an academic privilege, what he thinks about the president of the United <laughs> States, and the only question to close out the I've show. I've been asking good questions all interview that you could think of. I just of want to have a moment was, because this this what I really no, wait, 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 like a dude moment. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Poom poom. <laughs> okay. My girl West Indian. That's what she called her. Okay. So unfortunately, unfortunately, 
I heard the poom poom too. Yeah, you know, it's cool. <laughs> don't drop it. Don't, you, you did a no, great no, job. No, 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 Wait, no, 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 you almost, out you're almost out the door. Poom poom <laughs> on the brain. I'm half West okay. Indian. We do call it poom poom. Before we leave the show, <laughs> what else would you like people to know about you, your father, and your mission to be the voice for him? Yes. Um, let's see the new image that's that's being about to be created. You know, um, if you see. I don't know, ask yourself, if she never done nothing to you, then that, and then maybe let's change your perspective on him. Mm. You know, I have my own business I'm running, and then he has his own business he's running, and pretty soon I will, I'll vouch for him to the day he get out, and um, I'll work with him, and at the same time, I have my own things to, you know, my own accolades to care, mm. like, you know, accomplish. Do you fear your father will never get out? <clears throat> no, heck no, he's gonna get out. You know, he stood by so many people, I think I'll fight for him for him to get out. It's enough evidence for him to get out, you know? Mm. You know, those people who you've sat through in court put millions for, those rappers mm-hmm. all about them, you know, he'll get out. So things is looking up right now. Yeah, things are actually looking up right now. That's so good. That's, so that's why I'm, I'm not really in fear for that. Well, listen, say hello to your mother, Stormy. I actually really know Stormy is super cool. I will, I will. And it's like, it, it changed the interview for me. Not that my behavior changed, because mm-hmm. I'm still going to be reckless, but. You kind of felt like you knew him through. Yeah, I mean, just I know by, his mom yeah, very just well. by way of knowing her. Yeah, very mm-hmm. well. And Capadonna, she used to run all the puffy shit. You know, they Man, were, they were, you couldn't see Cap without Stormy or Lauren you, London, those three. Those were, I grew up with them too. Yeah. Yeah, so I love Cap, you know. Like Lauren, Lauren London, London as new, new Lauren London? Lauren London mm-hmm. as in the only Lauren London that we know about. Oh shit! I thought it was another Stormy, shit name, Lauren, Lauren, Cap. Oh, those wow. three, three, oh. three peas in the pod. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for coming on our show. Thank you guys, and uh, we appreciate you being open and honest, brother. Yes. And um, continue to stay away from people like Giovanni. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye, bye, guys. <laughs>